Today, I'm not just going to take you through the six reasons why it's so hard for men over 30 to burn belly fat, but I'm also going to tell you what you can do about it and how you can fix it so that you can lose the gut for good. Before we get into all that though, I want to give you some reassurance because if you're watching a video like this, I expect you're already trying to burn that belly fat. And if you are, the good news is that you're probably closer than you think. And I can say that with confidence because most people don't realize just how big one pound of fat is. In their head, they think they have to lose 50. And that puts them off from starting in the first place because it feels like an impossible task. But this is how big just one pound of fat actually is. Look at the size of it relative to my head. You see, the thing about fat is that it's not very dense. So you probably don't need to lose as many pounds as you think you do. The other thing I would say at this point, let me just get rid of that, is that if you feel like you're trying your absolute hardest to burn that belly fat, but it's just not budging, don't worry, because I can promise you one thing, you're not alone. Because in the last five years, hundreds of men, maybe even thousands at this stage, have come to me with the exact same problem. And it's always been because of one of the six reasons that we're gonna talk about today. But the good news is, is that there's a simple solution and it's worked for these guys, so I'm 100% confident that it's gonna work for you too. So let's get into the six reasons why it's so hard to burn that down belly fat. Reason number one is that you're on a diet, but you're not actually in a calorie deficit, which is where you're burning more calories than you're eating. So you might be doing something like intermittent fasting, low carb, keto, or carnivore, but all that's doing is removing a food group or telling you what time of day to eat. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're actually eating the right amount. Cutting out carbs might help you to lose some weight, particularly at the beginning, because it restricts the amount of water weight that your body can hold onto. And intermittent fasting might naturally reduce the amount that you eat. But both of these are restrictive, and that's never the answer long term, because you're always looking for a way out. You're always looking for the finish line. It's also complete guesswork. At the end of the day, if you're not in a calorie deficit, you're not going to be burning fat. But the thing thing is, is that your calorie deficit target is unique to you because it's based on your age, your weight, your height, your sex, and how active your lifestyle is. It's a precise number that you need a complicated formula to figure out. But it's important because like I said, we want to take the guesswork out of the equation. You want to know for certain that you're eating the right amount so that you can actually hit your goal. So to help you with that, I've built a brand new calculator. It's completely free. It takes the guesswork out of the equation and it's based on the latest formula and algorithms. So if you want to know your calorie deficit target so that you can start burning fat today, go ahead and click the first link that's going to be in the description underneath this video. Plug in your details, let the calculator do its thing, and I'll send you your target straight away. Reason number two is that you're in a calorie deficit, but you're going too hard and too fast. Let me explain what I mean. When I first start working with a brand new client, I give them several nutrition targets to aim for, one of those being their calories. But what a lot of guys do is that they hear that number, the target that I've given them, and then they decide to eat less than that because in their head, they think they're taking a shortcut. Their logic is saying, if I eat even less than Doug's told me to, I'll lose fat even faster. And I get it, logically, that does make sense, but it doesn't work that way. In fact, it's actually going to work against you. Because if you put yourself in a massive deficit, your brain is essentially going to think there's a famine and that you can't find any food to eat. And when that happens, it raises your cortisol level, which is your stress hormone. And it's doing that to make you more alert and aware so that you have more energy to go out and hunt for the food that your brain now thinks is scarce. Because it doesn't know that you've got a McDonald's on every corner. It doesn't know that you're trying to lose weight. It just senses that something's different. And our brains hate change. They love something called homeostasis, which is essentially just staying the same. Even if staying the same means staying unhealthy. So what it's going to do when your cortisol level is elevated is it's going to force every cell in your body to hold on to more water weight. In other words, it's going to bloat you out. But what it's also going to do, think about it, if you're more stressed out, you're going to find it much harder to stick to your deficit. You're just going to want to eat everything in sight. And it's going to negatively impact your sleep. And you all know what happens when that goes wrong. So when you do use the calculator that I've built and I send you your calorie deficit target, don't think that you can take a shortcut or cheat the system by trying to eat less than that. Just stick to that number and be patient. And speaking of which, the third reason is all about patience. You see, the way that you lose fat, where you lose it first on your body, 
is dictated by your hormones and your genetics. And for most people, unfortunately, that means that the last place that you're gonna lose it from is your belly. So even if you're doing everything right, and it's a big if, you'll probably lose the fat from every other part of your body before it comes off your belly. So what you want to do is track your progress in several ways. You don't just want to be weighing yourself. What I would suggest you do is take regular progress photos and actually measure your gut. Get actual data. And I promise you what that's going to do is it's going to help to keep you sane. And if you're sane, you're going to stay on track. I lost nearly 50 pounds back in 2018. The scales were going down every single week, like clockwork. But it wasn't until the end when I actually started to see my abs, specifically the last three weeks of my cut. These two pictures look like they were taken three months apart, but in reality, it was only about three weeks. And I actually think that's the biggest reason that most people aren't getting the results that they want. It's not because that they don't know what to do. It's just because they're not patient and disciplined enough. They're always chasing that next dopamine hit. But in all honesty, the less sexy it is, the better it'll work. Focus on doing the basics well. And if it's working, don't be tempted to change anything. Just keep going. Be patient and be disciplined. Moving on to reason number four, and it's that you're putting too much emphasis on working out. We don't actually go to the gym to lose body fat. Despite what you might have been told, you're not losing fat when you sweat. That's literally just water leaving your body. You actually breathe fat out as carbon dioxide. So whatever you do, don't go into your workout routine thinking that you have to work out every single day for two hours at a time or do some crazy CrossFit or high rocks or hit workout or whatever the cool kids are doing these days. All these fads come and go. And the reason they come and go is because long term, they don't work. They look sexy and they look exciting and people go, Whoa, give me a bit of that. But for the vast majority of people, apart from the absolute psychopaths, they're just not sustainable. It's so funny because whenever I call out something like CrossFit or High Rocks, I always get at least one person commenting on a video being like, yeah, but I've been doing CrossFit for six years and I go seven days a week and train three hours a day. It's like, yes, you are a psychopath. Think about it this way. Arnold Schwarzenegger, he used to work out six days a week for three hours at a time, which is a lot, but it's also not a lot. Not if you look at it as a proportion of your week. Because even if you had the time, energy, and willpower to train like Arnie, you'd only actually be spending about 10% of your week in the gym. And let's face it, 99% of people barely find the time to work out two or three times a week. But that's fine. In fact, that's all you need if you're smart and focused. For the vast majority of people, three well-structured, 45-minute full-body workouts is perfect. So this is what you want to do. Pick four to six exercises. Focus on compound movements, which use the biggest muscles because they burn the most calories. Think some form of squat, deadlift, and lunge for your lower body. And then for your upper body, you want some kind of dumbbell press as a push movement, and maybe a lat pull down or seated cable row as a pull movement. Then you want to use lighter weight than you normally would and do four sets of 15 to 20 reps with 45 to 60 second rest periods, rather than the usual three sets of 10 and two minute rest periods. Because think about it, if you're doing three sets of 10, you're doing 30 reps. But if you do four sets of 20, you're doing 80 reps. And because you're only resting for 45 to 60 seconds rather than the usual two minutes, you're gonna get more work done, more volume, in a shorter amount of time. With less exercise variety, higher rep ranges, and shorter rest periods, you're gonna make your workouts far more efficient and far more effective. Because with less exercises, what you're also doing is spending less time moving around between machines, loading and unloading weight, or waiting for equipment to become available. That means you can get in and out of the gym in less time. It means your workouts are gonna be more effective and it means you're gonna get better results. It's also worth saying that you can't spot reduce fat. So what I mean by that is that it's very logical to think that if you do more crunches, you'll get better abs, but what you really wanna focus on is burning the fat on top of your abs. And that's where those compound movements really come into their own. They use the biggest muscles, they often work your core as well, and like I said, they burn the most calories. So yeah, once you've lost most of the fat that you wanna lose, absolutely train your abs to get better shape and definition but don't train abs to get abs. And lastly, on reason number four is that you want to be paying more attention to your lifestyle out of the gym than you do in the gym. Because like I said earlier, even if you were training like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you'd only be spending about 10% of your week in the gym. 
If you train this way, doing the three 45 minute full body workouts, you're gonna be spending less than 2% of your week in the gym. So let's say that you sleep for 33%, let's say you work for 33% and you go to the gym for 2%, that means that you still have 30% of your week unaccounted for. That's where your lifestyle comes in. That's when you wanna be much more mindful and making more conscious choices about how you live it. So instead of driving to work, why don't you walk or cycle? Instead of taking elevators, lifts, why don't you go up the stairs or take the escalators at least? Instead of taking Zoom meetings, why don't you go old school and take walking meetings? Run around with your kids, do some gardening, clean your house. The possibilities are endless. But the point is, you really wanna pay more attention to your lifestyle out of the gym than you do in the gym. Because remember, we don't go to the gym to lose body fat. Reason number five comes down to the quality of the food that you're eating. Because even if you're in a calorie deficit, fat loss isn't just a numbers game. The calorie deficit message, whilst absolutely true and completely valid, has been oversimplified in the last few years. People have become hyper fixated on their calorie target with no regard for the quality of the food that they actually eat. It seems to have become a challenge for some people to see how big a shortcut they can take and as long as they're in their calories, they don't seem to care. You have people out there who are trying to prove a point that they can hit their calorie deficit just eating McDonald's. In my mind, you might as well put a gun to your head and pull the trigger because nothing could be more stupid. Fat loss is so much easier if you're focusing on the quality of the food that you're eating as well as the quantity. Because yeah, sure, you could just eat McDonald's and lose body fat, but I promise you, that is gonna be very, very hard. Junk and processed food is awful for you. Not only are the macros terrible with high saturated fat and basically no protein whatsoever, but it causes absolute havoc on your endocrine system, on your hormones, your insulin and your glucagon, which control your blood sugar levels, your cortisol, your stress hormone, which we've already spoken about, your testosterone, your sex hormone, and of course your hunger hormones, leptin and ghrelin. All of them are gonna be negatively impacted if you're just focused on hitting your calorie target with no regard for the quality of the food. You'll sleep worse, you'll crave more bad food, you'll never feel full, you'll have terrible gut health, you'll have brain fog, you'll have energy crashes, you'll have mood swings, the list goes on and on and on. If you get 80 to 90% of your food from single ingredient whole foods that are nutrient dense, not only are you gonna find it so much easier to stay within your calorie target, but you're gonna feel so much better in the process. Yes, your calorie target is obviously important if you wanna lose some weight and burn some body fat. But what I advise my clients to do now is base their diet on four simple principles. I've already talked you through the first one, eating mostly whole foods that's nutrient dense and avoiding the junk and processed food as much as you can. Second, you wanna make sure that it's omnivorous, getting your protein from lean meats, but getting your fibers from fruit and vegetables. But at the same time, you wanna make your diet as quick and simple as possible. So what I do for this is I eat the same breakfast every single day, and then I have four to five meals that I rotate for lunches and dinners throughout the week. But most importantly, all of those meals I can prepare from scratch in 20 minutes or less. And last, but probably most importantly, you wanna make sure that your diet's enjoyable because if you do that, it's never gonna feel like you're actually on a diet. And the way that I do that is by sprinkling in healthy snacks and treats every single day. Now, obviously healthy snacks and treats are gonna look different for everybody. But for me right now, at least, it's Fanta Lemon Zero Sugar. I have one of those every single day without fail, and a few squares of dark chocolate after lunches and dinners. I genuinely enjoy everything that I eat, and that should be the goal for your diet too. It's gonna take you some time to construct the perfect diet, but it's so worth it, because once you do, you essentially put your food on autopilot. Last, but certainly not least. Reason number six is that you're just not sleeping properly. Sleep is the foundation of human health and getting enough high quality sleep will make you superhuman. Sleep is also one of the highest leverage things that you can do because of all the amazing downstream benefits that come from it. Not just for your physical health, but your mental health too. You're gonna to get more energy, clarity, focus, strength, and above all else, happiness. You know what it's like. Everything just feels so much easier when you've had a few good nights sleep. And when it comes to your sleep, I'd encourage you to think about it this way. 
the next day really starts the night before. Because all the things that I just mentioned, energy, focus, clarity, productivity, they're all determined by the decisions that you make in the evening. So to improve your sleep, we need to consider three things. How well you're sleeping, how long you're sleeping, and how regularly you're sleeping. When it comes to your regularity, the science on this is pretty conclusive. If you can go to bed and wake up at the same time, or at least within sort of 60 minutes every single day, you're going to sleep a lot better and you're going to feel a lot better. So do that. To improve the quality of your sleep, we need to focus on your sleep environment. So you want your bedroom to be as cold, dark, quiet, and ventilated as possible. So here's what I want you to do. Go on Amazon and add these three things to your basket. Some blackout blinds, a fan, and some earplugs. None of those are gonna break the bank, but they are gonna make a massive difference to the quality of your sleep. And for ventilation, if you can, in an ideal world, you wanna sleep with your bedroom door open. But if you can't, for safety reasons, let's say, and as long as you don't live in a loud neighborhood or a loud city, just sleep with your bedroom window open. Now to make sure that you're getting enough sleep, we want to focus on your wind down routine. So the first thing that you want to do here is set a bedtime alarm. So when that alarm goes off, no matter what you are doing, you start getting into bedtime mode. Now the time that you set your bedtime alarm for is going to depend on the time that you want to wake up in the morning. What you want to do is work backwards from there. So let's say that you want to wake up at 7 a.m. The latest that you want to be asleep, not getting into bed, but actually going to sleep, ideally is 11 p.m. So the latest I would set your bedtime alarm for in that circumstance is 10 p.m. I'd also recommend that you follow something called the 3 2, 1 rule. And very simply put, this is where you stop eating three hours before you go to sleep, you stop drinking two hours before you go to sleep, and you come off all your screens, whether it's TVs, laptops, or phones, and a hour before you go to sleep. Eating is a metabolic process. It's something that raises your heart rate. And obviously, when you're going to sleep, you want to be lowering your heart rate down to a resting level. So give your body the time that it needs to digest and break down that food, which is about three hours. Drinking obviously fills your bladder. So if you cut it out two hours before you go to bed, you're obviously far less likely to wake up in a night needed to go to the loo. And the blue light from screens affects your body's ability to produce your sleep hormone, which is called melatonin. So there you have it. The six reasons why it's so damn hard for guys over 30 to burn belly fat and what to do about it. But like I said, it all starts with knowing your calorie deficit target. So if you haven't already, make sure that you click the link that's going to be in the description underneath this video and use that calorie calculator. It's completely free and you're going to get your results straight away. I'll leave it there for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video, but more importantly, I hope you found it useful. Now listen, YouTube is going to chuck another one of my videos up here. I actually don't know which one, but YouTube is a pretty smart cookie and it uses the algorithm. It uses what you've been watching up until now to recommend my next best video for you. So whatever you plan on doing next, I would recommend that you actually click this and watch this video. Cool. See you soon.